All right, so Musk now, as of today, I think, as of this morning, owns Twitter. He has bought it, um, it, it for whatever price he paid for it. Uh, debt holders are in the tank for it. Uh, the other equity providers other than Musk uh, have bought it. They are, they are in. They are in. Um, I think this is terrific. Uh, first of all, I think this is a fantastic example for the world. Not that the world really learns from examples, but it's always good to have an example. It's a great example for the world on how markets solve this so-called problem of limited uh, speech and platforms. You don't like the restrictions the platform has on speech? Then buy it. And that's what Elon Musk is doing. He's buying it. Uh, and you say, well, Elon Musk is rich. Other people couldn't do it. Well, other people could get together. They could form a, a, a group to buy it. They could take on more debt. They could use leverage buyouts. There are lots of ways in which uh, sophisticated investors can buy something even when they're not as rich as Elon Musk is rich. So I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's wonderful that he bought it. Whether it'll be successful or not, I don't know. But that's not the issue. The issue is that it's really cool to see the problem, supposed problem, and I'm not sure there is a problem, the supposed problem of Twitter having too restrictive a say in what people could say on that platform, that problem going away by basically somebody like Elon Musk buying Twitter. Now, it would be interesting, I'm interested, if everybody who's cheering Elon Musk buying Twitter and saying, this is great, this is a great, uh, you know, great for... Um, this is, this should be good. This should be, uh, this should allow me to go through because this is private property and it's great because, because the, the far left is, is yelling and screaming and really pissed off because they're saying, wait a minute, it's the public square. How can Elon Musk now own it? It's privately owned and, and he's going to limit our speech. He's going to constrain us. That's the left yelling and screaming because Elon Musk is supposedly associated with the right. Imagine, and, and the right is saying, oh, no, 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 don't do that. Private property, Elon Musk, you know. But imagine if, if, if George Soros bought Twitter. Oh, my God. Would Trump and everybody else be flipping out and yelling and screaming? Even if, by the way, George Soros committed to expanding speech and having more points of view and returning Trump and having everybody on the platform... Just because there was somebody on the left who bought it, people would be flipping out and yelling and screaming and being upset. I mean, the people on the right this time, the people on the left would be embracing it. I mean, it's amazing how much a people's opinions, how much of people's attitude is dictated by where they are on the tribal, on the tribal, uh, you know, Venn diagram or tribal maps map, um, which seems to determine more than anything else. Um, Wes, thank you. Wes just uh, supported the show with 50 bucks. Really appreciate it. He can't stick around, but he wanted to support us. Uh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Wes. All right. So uh, Elon is now in control. Elon has said he wants to expand uh, viewpoints. Uh, of course, one of the first things that happened when Elon um, took over uh, Twitter this morning, or was it yesterday, he basically fired the CEO which makes sense. He fired the CFO, which again, probably makes sense. And he, and he, and he fired uh, the legal counsel and the, uh, the people responsible for any kind of content moderation, they were all fired. So, um, uh, you know, so they, they, they're all, they've all been escorted out of the office. They're all gone. Uh, Elon Musk is now officially uh, in charge over there. He, uh, he is the C he's CEO, CFO, CRO. Uh, chief content officer, um, Jack was not on the payroll. Jack hasn't been on the payroll, what, for a year, two years? Jack hasn't been on the payroll in a long time. Jack is gone and has been gone for a long time. At least a year. So, uh, so Elon Musk has cleaned house in terms of uh, laid everybody off. He's declared himself to be the chief twit. Um, Elon Musk humor, uh, he is, um, and he is now basically uh, running shop. He's 
committed to laying off a lot of people. At some point, there was talk about 75% of the people, um, of the people but, um, but it looks like it's going to be significantly less than that. But, but there's going to be a lot of layoffs, a lot of turnover, a lot of rehiring, a lot of new appointments. They're going to have to hire a lot of new people for the C-suites. Now, Elon Musk is excellent at hiring people. Remember, Elon has started and run and, in a sense, own a variety of different com companies. I mean, he can do that because he has delegated and he's very good at delegating the actual running of the business and running aspects of the business to a variety of different people. He's, from everything I hear, he's excellent at hiring quality people and leaving them alone and letting them run the place. Um, this is why he can get so much done. This is why he is so productive and so, uh, so efficient. So Musk is an extraordinary businessman in his ability to run multiple businesses and do so, so well and, and hire extraordinary people that can be left alone to, to run the businesses for him with his uh, uh, oversight. So, uh, you know, so Musk is now um, taking on this additional role of, of being CEO of, uh, of Twitter. We'll see how long he stays CEO and how quickly he hires um, a, a, a CEO uh, basically to run day-to-day -day operations over it. Um, somebody said Jack Dorsey. Yeah, Jack Dorsey's gone a long time ago, but he is, you know, one thing that's interesting also came out today. Uh, Jack Dorsey, about a year ago, maybe two years ago, said that he was starting a new venture, which was um, going to be a, um, a social media company, a Twitter-like company, but it was all going to be on the blockchain. It was all going to be, uh, it, it, it was in a sense going to be peer-to-peer -peer kind of Twitter. I think it's called Blue Sky. Um, and uh, so nobody actually can control the network. The network is, is I get, I, you know, I don't know how these things work, but the network somehow is on the blockchain. It's all encrypted. It, nobody can control it. Nobody can edit it. Nobody can, uh, uh, you know, take stuff off. Um, you own the post that you put up there. Nobody else owns them. So it, it sounds like a pretty powerful platform Twitter-like, supposedly. Anyway, Jack Dorsey supposedly was, was working on this and has been working on this in the background for a few years. He, he started working on it while he was CEO of Twitter. He saw what was coming in terms of the controls and the pressure and the influence that, that was placed on Twitter because A, it's for profit, and B, uh, so it needs profit in order to sustain itself. It needs profit in order to have capital to continue with investment. But here he found a way, uh, this blue sky supposedly is all done. Um, in some way, it's, it's, it's actually a nonprofit kind of venture where, um, you know, I, I, I don't know enough about how it exactly works, but uh, it, it's, it's anonymous and, you know, uh, uh, Twitter, you know, in the blockchain. That's my understanding. Anyway, whatever that means. And supposedly he launched the beta of the product today, the same day that Elon Musk started with Twitter. Twitter has got its competition from Jack Dorsey. So Jack Dorsey launched his beta today. Today. Um, right, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, where am I? Yes, uh, some more stuff about uh, Musk buying Twitter. Let me just say this. So here is a tweet that Elon Musk tweeted about an hour and a half ago, um, which I think is interesting uh, in terms of content moderation on uh, Twitter. Here's what the tweet said. Twitter will be forming a content moderation council with widely diverse viewpoints. No major content decisions or counting and statements will happen before that council convenes. <laughs> so I, this is fascinating. I told you months ago that buying Twitter, running Twitter, figuring out what content kind of moderation would, in Twitter would be is not easy, not straightforward, not simple and that Elon Musk was going to discover that this is complicated and this is hard 
and that it, you know it, he he trivializes this and um, and uh, you know everybody. Not, I don't know that Elon Musk could trivialize it, but people trivialize it. Oh, we'll just open everything up. It doesn't work that way. You need content moderation. What does that content moderation look like? Well, now we're going to have a council. By the way, Facebook has a council already. Has had a council for a year or two or three. I don't know. So now we're going to have a council to decide our content moderation. And we're not going to reinstate anybody until the council convenes. <laughs> it just seems like, wait a minute. <laughs> what is all the yelling and nonsense and hoopla and stuff being about if you're just going to appoint a content moderating council? So it turns out even Elon Musk, even Elon Musk thinks that you need content moderation. Go figure. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brook Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Brook Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.